When we talked about the new Lord Solar being revealed on Monday, quite a few people asked me where this particular horse would sit when it came to our ranking of the top 5 horses in Warhammer 40k. The problem is that I don't think this belongs on that particular list because I don't think that this is actually a real horse. Now I know what you're thinking to yourself, you are thinking how could that possibly not be a real horse? Well I have a theory and I think it's a strong theory when it comes to the new Lord Solar and that is that the Lord Solar himself is not the man. The new Lord Solar is the horse. I put it to you that the cybernetic work that has gone into this horse is far too good for the Imperium, for the Mechanicus, to waste on a simple horse. This is not any old horse. It might be this guy's favourite horse, but it is still far too well made to simply be an equine companion. Let us take a look, for instance, at the Cerberus Raiders. Now, these, we decided, were excellent horses in our previous ranking video for the top 5 horses in Warhammer 40,000, and yet these are nowhere near the artistry and the finery is demonstrated by this magnificent specimen right here. Look at the curves, look at the lines, look at the neatness of the rivets, look at the ornamentation that has been lavished upon this particular horse. Now it's true that these do have some ornamentation themselves, but for the most part they are function over form. The legs are bare metal with almost no artistry involved, the cables are absolutely everywhere, you can see all the bits that make these things move, things like the spinal column is outside of the actual horse itself. By contrast, this is like a renaissance work of art. Look how masterfully they have hidden most of the cables. Look at the finery in the legs, the detail. Even the Castellan robots, which is one of the more advanced robots that the Mechanicus has access to, is nowhere near as finely made as Constantin the horse. You see, we need to consider what it is that makes a good commander, what it is that makes a good Lord Solar. Is it simply tactical acumen? Is it simply the ability to see the battlefield and know what's going on and where to send troops, where to reinforce the line, where to fall back? No, it's not just that. There's also the question of experience. And the fact is that whilst humans can be given extensive rejuvenate treatments, they are still human. They are still liable to fail, they are still liable to get shot or killed. They will eventually pass from old age. It's just one of those things. However, however, if you look at a servitor for the Adeptus Mechanicus, those can go on almost indefinitely, despite requiring a little bit of organic material, that being the brain. The fact is that this is a perfect solution. The perfect solution is for the Lord Solar to be a mechanical being which is not going to draw as much fire as the rider upon its back. This is a method by which the true genius, the true brains of any operation is masterfully hidden inside what would normally be a simple steed. Place yourself in the position of being a sniper on the enemy side of the battlefield. You see a shining example of Astra Militarum genius atop his white horse. You see the flowing cloak, you see the crown, the flare, the halo, you see him wielding a fancy sword. You have got one shot. You can only take out one thing. You notice he's riding a horse. Now, does the horse seem significant enough to waste that one bullet? Does it seem significant enough to take the shot? No. You will go for the man on the horse. The horse is immaterial, it is merely a means of transport. No one is going to suspect the horse of being a true tactical genius with the brain of human which is overseeing the entire battle. No one would suspect that. But everyone would suspect that the lad on the back is the one that you want to get rid of. Of course, the only way for this to truly work in a battlefield situation is for the man riding Constantin to have no idea that Constantin is in fact the true Lord Solar. The man on his back known as Arcadian Leontis is in fact a plant, but there is no guarantee that he will be able to continue acting as he should under battlefield conditions. The only way this subterfuge could possibly work long term is if Arcadian Leontis truly believed that he was in fact the Lord Solar. So it is that he spends entire battles giving orders, shouting directions, trying to direct the flow of combat, never knowing that not a single word that leaves his lips arrives in the ears of his troops, because they are receiving orders directly from Constantine in himself. So there you have it. A compelling argument, I feel, and something that I think most of you will agree on. This is the real Lord Solar.